Muscle versus marathon. Can you add muscle and be a faster runner? I wanted to find out. Building and maintaining muscle is something I talk about all the time, especially as we grow older. However, something in the back of my mind always wondered if it was gonna have a massive impact on my running ability. The phone rang. It was Russell from the charity asking me if I wanted to run a marathon. Hmm, it's been a while since I run a marathon. Well, over a decade, actually. My brain was doing somersaults. Did he mean the London Marathon? I was trying to do the calculations in my mind. Hmm. Nick, it's 10 weeks. You got 10 weeks to train. Loads of time for a thick lad like you. I pulled out my phone, looked at my calendar. I realized it was nine and a half weeks. Nine and a half, half weeks of training to get a decent running time for the marathon. Whilst being five kilos, mostly of muscle, heavier than any other time in my life. Certainly the last time I ran a marathon. As a 45 year old male coach, who's worked in the fitness industry for a decent amount of time. I know how important it is to carry a good amount of muscle into your 40s and 50s and have exceptional cardiovascular fitness. So this for me was a really good test. Would I go through with it? Would I find a reason not to do something that potentially sounded quite tough, especially given the training period that I just didn't have and a busy life, busy family, all the other stuff that just gets thrown into the mix and we're expected to deal with. This leaves us with a conundrum. You want to have good muscle mass and you want to have good cardiovascular or endurance fitness. However, when we look at the top athletes, those marathon runners, Kipchoge and all his buddies, they are seriously underweight compared to someone like me. So how the hell was I going to be able to actually achieve my goal of not very much training and trying to get a PB for my marathon? I drafted my plan and it was based around these key factors that were the highest priority of the things I needed to focus on. Number one was injury risk. I stood a really good chance of just going full into marathon training and getting an injury. So I really didn't want that to happen because I wanted to turn up and support the charity on the start line. Number two, maintaining my muscle mass. And number three was time pressures, running around like a crazy person, working two jobs, running my coaching business, having two boys at home to chase around as well. Guess that could benefit to my endurance at a certain extent. So what was my actual strategy? I ran twice a week, only twice a week. That might sound surprising to you, but that's basically all I could fit into my schedule. And I wanted to mitigate that injury risk. The second part was I ate a lot. So in order to maintain my muscle mass and have enough energy to do the longer runs and progressively longer runs as I trained for the marathon, I knew I had to eat a lot of calories. So injury risk and eating well. Those were the two things that probably front and center for that nine and a half week period. Oh, did I mention that bang in the middle of that training block, I had to go and climb Kilimanjaro, which yeah, some altitude training was great, but I didn't get any running done and I was probably undernourished and fatigued. I certainly put myself at risk of injury. What was at stake? Building and maintaining muscle mass is something I talk about a lot and has been a main focus of mine in coaching and in my own personal training for a long, long time. However, we all want to run well. We all want to try and get that PB. We want to be progressing towards that goal. And this conundrum of trying to build muscle mass and maintain my endurance fitness is something that I've pondered for a long time. So I really wanted to put it to a test. Could you carry more muscle and get a PB in your marathon? Did I get a PB? That is the question you're probably asking yourself. Well, before I answer that question, the first tick in the box was, was I able to turn up injury free and in a rested state so I could actually give myself a good opportunity to run a half decent marathon. Bearing in mind, I haven't run a marathon for, I think 13 years. So I turned up and I started the race. And even with an additional five kilos of muscle, I was able to be my PB. PB was set, wait for it, three hours, 43 and 18 seconds prior to that 2011 Athens Marathon. And London 2023, 
I managed to turn up 3.43.09. Beat my time. <laughs> Only just. What we at? Nine seconds. That was sweet skin of my teeth type stuff. But hey ho, I hadn't trained. I gave myself a small training block and I did manage to maintain my muscle mass. My takeaways, hopefully this will help. Number one, get a plan and a strategy that is going to get you the goal that you want. So many times I hear people talk about what they want to achieve and they do not have a system, process or plan to how they're actually going to get that. It's not aligned. The two things are completely separate. So number one, get a plan that fits the goal that you want. Number two, nearly fell foul of this. Under train and under plan or prepare at your peril. So fitness and health is not something you can kind of wing or cuff. And as blokes, I think we really need to remind ourselves of that on a regular basis. But wait, there's a catch. I was there to guide and support a partially sighted, visually impaired runner. <laughs> this guy was a demon of a, of a runner. He was a speed merchant who trains in Austria at altitude, running is his thing. And he was probably 15, maybe more kilos lighter than I was. The good thing about running with Mark and supporting him was he absolutely dragged me around the course. And I don't think I would have achieved the time I achieved had it not been with him pushing me as hard as he did. I probably would have sat back on my laurels and swung in 10, 15 minutes after the time I shared with you. So I had a lot of help and I had a lot of support. Number three, sometimes you need to be dragged well beyond what you think your capabilities are and you need to get the support in a way to go well beyond what you think is possible. That, I think, is where accountability and really having to show up for something is going to get you that extra distance and get you the results and keep pushing you forwards. Me being me, I don't think I would have got anywhere near that time had I not had the support that I had. Getting help is absolutely vital. And if you are a runner or have a good level of cardiovascular fitness and you're thinking to yourself, you know what, I actually want to add muscle because I think it might support me in having confidence, longevity, health goals, actually just looking better, having that beach body you've always dreamed of, then maybe you might want to check out my community where I have broken down all the steps required and pieced them together in a very straightforward system that I can give to you inside the free Fit Lean Dad community. Link is down below. See you on the inside.